Chess is a lot like team sports. You wouldn't send just one football player onto the field to win the game all alone. In chess, you want to use all of your pieces working together to achieve the same goal. Let's take a look at this position. Look at White's pieces. Notice how well they are working together. White has a pawn controlling the center. And notice how all of White's pawns are well placed, helping each other out. White's queen and bishop are lined up together on the b1 to h7 diagonal, pointing directly toward Black's castled king. White's knight on g5 is aggressively placed, joining the queen and bishop in attacking the kingside. White's other knight protects the knight on g5 and also controls key central squares. White's rooks are connected and ready to jump into action on the f-file once White's knight on f3 moves. Now look at Black's position. The pawns aren't controlling as many squares and Black has very little control of the center. The rooks are passive, the knights aren't coordinated, Black's bishop is unprotected, and what is that queen doing on a7? Let's walk through a few moves to see what will happen. White's rooks are ready to join the rest of the team and enjoy great activity on the f-file, but White's knight on f3 is in the way, so White brings the knight into the center with knight e5. The knight attacks the unprotected bishop on d7 and also opens up the rooks to put pressure on the f-file. Notice how the rooks join the knights in placing pressure on f7. There's four attacking pieces total on that square. Notice the knight on g6 is pinned because if the knight captures the knight on e5, this opens up the b1 to h7 diagonal, allowing checkmate with queen takes h7. If black tries to fork white's knights with f6, white can play knight takes g6. Notice how all of white's pieces work together so black does not have a good defense. If black takes the knight on g5, this opens up the f-file and allows checkmate with rook takes f8. If black takes the knight on g6 with h takes g6, white will play queen takes g6, threatening checkmate on h7. If rook to e8, attempting to give the king an escape square if white delivers a check on h7, white now has another tactic using all of white's pieces together. Notice the pawn on g7 is pinned. Can you see how white can take advantage of the pinned pawn? That's right, rook takes f6. White captures the pawn and prevents the king from escaping to the f8 square. Queen h7 checkmate is on its way. Black plays bishop to e8, bringing the bishop to safety and adding another protector to f7. Black's scattered, passive pieces are no match for White's well-coordinated team of pieces. White now captures the knight on g6 with knight takes g6. Black is now forced to capture with the h-pawn because if f takes g6, the f-file is wide open and allows White to play rook takes f8, checkmate. After h takes g6, Black thinks everything is covered, but now the h-file has opened a new line of attack. White's knight is covering the h7 square, so white uses teamwork between the knight and the queen to set up mate and one with queen h3. Look at how nice the queen and knight work together, threatening checkmate on h7 on the very next turn. Black does not have a defense because the rook on f8 cannot move, so the king does not have a flight square. If black attempts f6, attacking the knight, it's too little too late. White plays queen h7, Checkmate. White's pieces worked very well as a team, combining the powers of each piece to overwhelm Black's defenses. Now it's your turn to practice making your pieces work together.